I want to talk about why autistic people seem more autistic after they get a diagnosis. Now this is something I've been pondering, thinking about for quite a long time since I got my diagnosis as an adult. It seems to be very prevalent that when an autistic adult gets diagnosed and they didn't know for all of their life so far that they were autistic, when they do find out and they discover all the traits, they discover what masking is and they start trying to unmask, they start trying to be themselves and let out who they are underneath. Once they start to let that out, they become more autistic in other people's eyes. Now, this is definitely something that I noticed in my own journey, because when I first got my diagnosis, I was in such a state of masking, trying to fit in. I was in qu quite a bad mental state. I'd been struggling for years and years and years. And so when I finally discovered why I'd been struggling, and why I never fit in, why school was hard, all of these things were now explained. And once I started to adapt myself, adapt to my needs, discover what my needs were, and put things in place to make my life easier on a sensory type level, I started to feel myself becoming more autistic on the outside. I think the problem is that a lot of non-autistic people, a lot of holistic people, neurotypical people, they think presenting and being autistic on the outside is a bad thing. They see the traits and they think, you should hide that, we don't want to see that, you know, you're going to get bullied, that is wrong, it's wrong. When actually, it isn't wrong at all. Being autistic and showing that you're autistic, showing autistic joy, stimming in public, all of these things that were kind of taught to hide, especially for assigned female at birth, autistic people, women, it's generally a lot more prevalent for us to mask. This kind of theory of women, girls, AFAB people being more likely to mask is generally the theory of why young autistic girls are missed and it's usually a late diagnosis in the adult, in the teens, because that's when, you know, they have a breakdown or they can't cope anymore and they can't mask anymore and it all comes bottling out. That's what happened to me <laughs> and I know that is what's happened to so, so many people who were missed. On the flip side of this, it's quite common for young autistic boys who don't mask their traits, everything is outward, maybe they have a learning disability as well so that it's more obvious that they're struggling. They tend to get diagnosed when they're young and that means they tend to get support, they tend to be accepted or, you know, they kind of get the accommodations that they need either way. And I think that is why so many autistic women, so many autistic adults are kind of left behind and we're not understood. And so circling back to when we do get our diagnoses, it can seem like it's coming out of nowhere to everybody else. I know for me, I always knew something was different, not to be cliche, but I always knew inside that something was missing. There was this knowledge, this kind of understanding and reason that I'd always been kind of searching for. I was like, why do I never fit in? Why do I struggle with things? Why am I not like everybody else? Why can't I just function and be a human? Those were all the questions going around my head all through school. And then finally, when I got my diagnosis at 18, I was like, oh, okay, I am human. I am normal. I'm just a neurodivergent type of normal. I'm just autistic instead of neurotypical. And it, it did make everything click into place. And so, yes, I maybe did become more autistic on the outside, but the important thing for people to know, the important thing for neurotypical people to understand is that I was always autistic on the inside. I have always been the same on the inside. You know, I've gone through all these changes, I've masked, I've fit in with this group and that group, and I've changed my outside so many times that I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't even know what the inside was. And now that I know what that is and I'm accommodating for it and I'm working with the style of thinking with my autistic brain, everything kind of makes sense and I feel okay letting things out. I feel okay stimming in public or in front of friends and family. I feel okay accommodating for my needs and wearing sunglasses in the shop if the lights are too bright. Things like that, I now do. And although that makes me stick out more, it makes me more obvious that I'm autistic, it makes it more obvious that I need extra accommodations and it makes me look different, I guess. But the important thing is that I'm okay with that. The big change isn't that I'm suddenly autistic. It's not that I seem more autistic and I'm struggling more. It's just that I'm showing it. It's on the outside rather than being bottled up on the inside. And the benefit of it being on the outside instead of being bottled up is that it's not inside. It's not rising and being squashed down. I'm not an impending volcano about to explode. I think the reason I had such a difficult time at college 
was because I'd spent the majority of my life, I'd spent like 18 years masking and not knowing who I was and I was just struggling all the time and I didn't know why. And so when I got my diagnosis, it felt like this massive turning point of, okay, I can deal with this. I can understand it. I, I have something to go down and I finally felt like I was on a path that made sense to me. I was on a path that suited me and I finally started feeling good once I let everything out. And so, yeah, I am quite autistic in looks sometimes. I don't make eye contact very much. I make eye contact with a camera, but not as much as people would expect. It's just all these things that people are like, oh, it's fine, it's normal, and they brush it off. When I actually got my diagnosis and started understanding these things and I started letting them out more, it was increasingly obvious that it was a part of me and that I did actually struggle with things. I didn't used to think I stimmed. When I first started looking into autism, I was like, but I don't spin around in a circle and flap my hands and cry and hit my head like the young boys that are autistic. And so I was like, I can't possibly auti be autistic if I can walk into a shop without headphones on. You know, I'd done that my whole life. I didn't like it and it made me very anxious and made me have panic attacks, which I now know are actually sensory meltdowns in some cases. I just didn't understand why and I didn't let it out, therefore nobody thought I was autistic. I hid it so well that I convinced everybody, including myself. And so now I wear headphones pretty much all the time. I wear my loop earplugs. I openly stim and the best thing is I don't even realise it anymore. It's not even an active thing that I have to decide whether to let out. I just do it instinctively. <laughs> I'm not even going to want to put this in, but this is me genuinely just stimming after filming. I'm filming thumbnails right now and I'm just happy because I'm talking about how I've improved and how much progress I've made and it's making me happy. And this is what autistic joy can look like sometimes. And I never show this. I still cut it out of videos. I'm still getting used to letting it out in front of people. And even though there's no person here, I know that people are going to be watching this. <laughs> Just, you know, be kind. Um, <laughs> give people the benefit of the doubt. But yeah, this is my happy state. But maybe some of you can relate to that and just let it out. Let it out because you're safe and welcome here, at least in this community. <laughs> I don't worry about what people are going to think. And if they do think something, if they do say, you look weird, what are you doing? Why are you acting like a child? That's a very common comment I get. I don't worry about that. I just think... It's nothing to do with me. I don't need your approval to be myself. I don't need your approval to be autistic because it's just who I am and if you're not okay with that, then I'm not okay with you. <laughs> you don't need the people who don't accept you and I think it's such a hard pill to swallow and I definitely lost a lot of people. I'd no longer fit in with friends, I no longer fit in with the groups, I no longer fit in at college but I left college, I'm now in the adult working world, kind of, and it suits me so much better because I don't have to fit in with anybody. I found the community online, so I have everybody there who is just openly themselves and it's so refreshing. That's why I love that side of the internet, it's amazing. And then in person, my family and friends accept me and that's all I need. But yeah, I thought that might be a little interesting topic to cover. It's something that I feel quite strongly about because so many people, when I told them about my diagnosis, were like, I've known you your whole life, I don't think you're autistic. And I'm like, hold on a second, <laughs> it's my brain. I know I'm autistic and if I'm telling you that I am and that I'm finally letting it out and I need you to accommodate that and help me, then you need to listen. And if it's somebody in your family, in your class, maybe you're a teacher, if it's a friend telling you that they need help with accommodations and they're telling you that they are autistic, even if you don't think it matches what they are, what, how they've been around you, chances are they've been masking. Chances are they need your help to now be themselves and they just need acceptance. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't assume you know their brain better than they know their own brain. You know, be kind because you don't know what is going on inside somebody's brain unless they tell you. And more often than not, especially if you're autistic and masking, we don't tell people what's going on. We want to hide it. We want to fit in. We just don't want to seem like we're different. And it's a very reassuring, relieving, amazing feeling when you finally realise you don't care if people see that you're different. And yeah, that's about where I am in my journey. I'm kind of still at the adapting point, but I have come so, so far. I don't know if it's visible in my content. A lot of people have said I got my spark back, which makes me so happy to hear, but I really lost myself for quite a while. I'm going to go into more detail of, in this in my book. I've got a book coming out that is such a cool sentence to say but yeah I've gone quite into detail about how I struggled especially at school and that is something I've not really spoken about in videos before so definitely try and get your hands on that when it comes out I'll be updating and yeah 
that's a little bit of my story, a little bit of wisdom, I guess, if you can call it that. But I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into why people might seem more autistic and the whole diagnosis curve of unmasking. It's quite interesting and I think if you just listen to people, if you hear out autistic people and just listen to their stories and what they're trying to tell you rather than jumping in and thinking you know better, it can make a world of a difference. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that was interesting, and leave any comments down below if you have like suggestions or questions, videos you want to see. I'm happy to chat about anything autism, Tourette's, disability. I'm going to be doing a lot more wheelchair content at the moment because I'm due to get my new attachment. I ordered it yesterday. In my video last week I was talking about how I'm trying to get an attachment sorted and it had been a nightmare trying to figure it out and get it ordered and I hadn't been able to do it. And finally, I got it ordered last night, I sent off the payment, I spent so much money on it. I'm so many pounds poorer, but you know what? I'm gonna get my freedom back, hopefully. I will update when I get that, probably do a video on it, and I'm just excited, hopefully, to feel better in the future. And I think I am slightly improving this week. This week, I felt so much better mentally and cognitively. I've been able to, like, do sit-down work, which is so different from how I was a couple weeks ago, because I was physically and cognitively, mentally, just not even there. So I'm grateful for that and I just hope my body catches up soon <laughs> and actually lets me go outside and not feel crap most of the time. That's it for today. I will see you next Sunday 5pm for another video, hopefully if I'm well enough to film. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you have a lovely, lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.